The iman that Allah SWT has given you and to you, your children. You sending them to state schools and day in, day out, it has been washed, it has been diluted. I can use many different examples to bring this point clearly to you. But let me just give you uh, one example in which the Prophet وسلم, in a small hadith gave us a beautiful and comprehensive educational philosophy. He said, وسلم, every child is born on the fitrah. Every child, me, you, every so all human beings, because we were all children at one time, we were all born on the fitrah. And fitrah scholars describe as a natural inclination towards tawheed, remember, uh, understanding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That means, and Ibn Khaldun put it very nicely. Ibn Khaldun was actually a father of sociology. The Western people think that they had their own fathers of sociology, but they forget that Ibn Khaldun was the first person to actually expound things in sociological terms. And he explains this particular verse wonderful way. If you permit me. He said, human beings, we are social beings. Yeah? That means we need a society to exist. And he gives one simple example like bread. Bread. To put the bread on our table, we need a baker. The baker will need somebody who makes a, a, a stove, oven, a farmer, etc., etc., etc. So many people. So as human beings, we need people around us to survive, even for that simple bread. Which means we can't survive alone. And fitra, they say that if it was left alone, that person will grow to worship Allah SWT alone and nobody else. But he can't survive alone. He needs a society, a community to survive. But the community and society exerts influences on him. And that's what the Prophet said. Every child is born on the fitra, but it is parents who made him a Christian, who make him a Christian, a Jew or a pagan. Few words of the Prophet ﷺ, but a comprehensive educational philosophy was given to us. That means this natural inclination, which is recognizes the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and wants to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, doesn't stay the same. It's changeable, it's malleable, it can be changed. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ said that it is the parents who make him a, a Christian or a Jew or a pagan. What did the Prophet ﷺ mean? He didn't say that oh, there's a little button that you switch and he becomes a Christian, switch this button he becomes a Jew and all that. No. He was saying to us there's a process involved. And scholars say it's an educational process involved that changes the person from what he or she is to what he or she can be. And it's not only Muslim scholars who accept that. Even the Western scholars accept that human beings can be changed and the medium of change is through an educational process. Professor Hicks, a very eminent uh, professor in this country, he said it is through education that human beings become what they are from what they were and what, will, what they will be from what they are. It is an educational process. So it's a universally accepted thing that human beings change, their thought processes change, their understanding change through a process, a medium of education. Now, coming back to the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, each of us are born on the fitrah. If our parents put us in a Christian environment where there's Christian education, Christian culture, and the whole surrounding is Christian, then according to the words of the Prophet ﷺ, that child will become a Christian. Not my words, not your words, the words of the Prophet ﷺ. And the Prophet ﷺ said, whatever I say, the Prophet ﷺ said, is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to the Prophet ﷺ, that if a child is exposed to a Christian environment, education, culture, right, he will or she will become a Christian. Likewise, if our children are put in a Jewish environment, Jewish culture, Jewish education, Jewish, Jewish philosophy, that child will become a Jew. That's why, because the Prophet ﷺ has said it, and all the educationists concur with him, and so forth with the pagan. 
If our children are exposed to a paganistic culture, a paganistic education philosophy, a paganistic upbringing, according to the words of the Prophet that child born a Muslim, born in a Muslim home, but because he's been, ex because he's been exposed to a paganistic culture, a paganistic education philosophy, that child will become a pagan. Those are not my words. Those were the words of the Prophet ﷺ. Small words, but a comprehensive educational philosophy for us to understand and reflect. Now let's look at our children's lives, brothers. Let's be honest. Because there's a duty on you and me as the verse says, to safeguard our children. And Iman is the most important thing in safeguarding their future in the Akhirah. So, if you do an honest analysis of our children, our lifestyle, then we can see what environment are we really sending our children to. And we have to be very honest. Let's take Monday to Friday. The child and from the age of three nowadays, four, right up to sixteen, foundation years. That's what the Prophet said, a child, in the childhood. Eight o'clock or so he'll get up or she will get up, get ready, go to the school. And then at three o'clock, stay to the school, stay in the school environment until three, three thirty, whatever it is, come home. Maybe have the tea, maybe watch TV, maybe do this. And some of them or most of them would then go to a madrasa for maybe two hours in the evening. After madrasa about seven o'clock, I'm just giving you a rough idea. They'll come home, time for dinner, time for some activity, time for TV, time for play, and then they'll go to bed. And this cycle takes place Monday to Friday. Weekends everybody does their own things. Let's analyze that. When the child's mind is fresh, where do you send him? to the school. What is happening in the school? Is it an Islamic environment? Is there Islamic education? Is there Islamic tarbiyah? Is there Islamic developing Islamic akhlaq? Is there a development of Islamic knowledge, deen, love for the Prophet love for Allah subhanahu wa reading the Quran, learning the hadith. Is that taking place? If it's not taking place, it is definitely not an Islamic environment. I leave it to you and go and see what's happening in the, in the schools. Through the hidden curriculum, values have been passed. Oh, you don't have to believe in Allah SWT. This is old fashioned. You don't have to marry to have sex. That's old fashioned. You can have boyfriend, you can have girlfriend, you can, have, you can become a homosexual. It's fashionable to become a homosexual. It's in the curriculum. I know it, I read it. What sort of environment are we sending our children to? From the morning, 8, 9 o'clock, whatever, till 3.30, when their minds are fresh, superior learning environment, well-trained teachers, well-developed curriculum, everything went fantastic in the school. The child is learning, developing, internalizing those values. And then he'll come home, maybe spend 5-10 minutes with his parents. How much have we got time for our children? Let's be honest, in the daytime. Either father's working, mother's doing this, this and that. And then we send his son to the madrasa. 